Hi everyone, it's Chris from Stamp Blessings and I hope you're having a great day. It's been a nice lazy day for me and I've been able to play a little bit with some inks and some stamp sets. So that's always, I call that a win. Well, I can hardly believe that June is almost over. And with that, that means that Close to My Heart Stamp of the Month, which is Botanical Shadows, is retiring. So you have just today and tomorrow yet to nab this great stamp set. Now, um, if you place an order on my website or any Close to My Heart demo that you work with, uh, if you place an order for $50, then this stamp set is just $5. And if you're a VIP and you spend $50, it's free. That is one of the great perks about being a VIP. Every month that you spend $50, you get the stamp of the month for free. Plus, you're earning back 15% on your purchases. So I love that about our VIP program. And if you want to find out more about it, I'm going to leave um, some information in the link down below. So, uh, don't want to spend $50 and I get that, um, then you can buy this at retail, which is also really great. But today I'm going to be working with this beautiful tree line. So last week I did on my Facebook group, my Stamp Blessings Facebook group, I did this Distressed Ink tutorial. And um, I really like the card. It reminds me of a sunset at my parents' place. They live on a lake. And so um, this is kind of reminiscent of it. But then on Instagram yesterday, I spotted a beautiful card that at Hey Marsha makes. She made this great um, version with a light blue sky. And I love how she had some white left over. I ended up putting a little pink in there, which is why I matted the card in pink. Um, it picks it up. It's really, really a light look. But this too reminds me of the mornings that I wake up at my parents' place, look out the window over the lake, and it is just gorgeous. I'm excited that I'm going there next week. Well, since I've already done a live in my Facebook group on this one, I'm going to go ahead and show you today how to make this card. And so I'm going to start with a base that's actually four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I'll leave measurements how to cut it down. I like starting a little bit bigger and then cutting down because it lets me cut away any area that might have gotten, you know, not as nice. So let's go ahead and get started. So the dark card that I showed you, I made with Distress Oxide inks, but I want to show you how beautiful that the close to my heart inks work with this technique. So you don't have to go out and buy something special. Now, uh, we sell both bristle brushes, these little blender brushes and the Tim Holtz round ones. For this technique, I really do like these brushes. And I'll be honest, I bought my pack on Amazon. I like to save my money where I can and um, so if you need help finding something, you can also buy them at the Dollar Tree or the Dollar Store. I'm not sure which one, but they have them everywhere. Anyway, we're going to start with Glacier. If you are not familiar with the Close to My Heart inks, they are big. They are four and a quarter by three and a half inches, plus they're magnetic. So I really like that feature. Watch. So you can lift it up, you keep the lid together, you don't lose your lid, which is nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And because the glacier is so light, I can pretty much go direct to paper on this one. And I'm just gonna go ahead and swirl. Now, um, whatever I do on the top is what I have to remember to do on the bottom since it's a reflection. And you probably can't even really see the color going on you're probably wondering why are you even doing that Chris but it is there ever so lightly and I really like the variation of the color and I'm just I'm pressing pretty hard to get this going but I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it because I found no matter what the results are not really good so where I might think it looks kind of blotchy I'll be happy in the end how nice it looks I'm going to just bring in a little bit more. I can always go back and add more. So I set that glacier aside. And the next color I'll use is Capri. 
Capri is a little bit darker, so I want to um, start off the mat, or off the paper, on the mat, off the paper. So I'm going to just start swirling it a little bit, and then I come on in. And a lot of times you'll get a little bit of a dark tone right there on the edge, but that's the nice part about cutting this paper down to size. I can just trim that away and it won't even show. So I really like that. I'm going to just blend and bring that down. Again, you can see that I'm making kind of a repeated shape and I'm going to have my tree line go right across the center there. So I'm keeping that in mind as I ink it up. It's not an exact science because reflections aren't perfect, right? All right. So this is looking really good. And I think I'm going to go ahead and add just a little pink because if I wait till the end, I might forget. But I don't want to go too heavy on it. So I'm going to just kind of light brush it and then let's see what happens here. Yeah, I'm going to just kind of come over it. This again is a light pink. That one got a little bit dark, but hopefully I can put a tree there to cover that up. So when I stamp down, I'll be strategic about that. All right, so you'll get to see. I did practice this ahead of time last time. I didn't, and I regretted it. It's a little bit nerve-wracking, but this one, I think it's going to turn out great. All right, so I'll set aside my craft mat, and then I'm going to go ahead, and I like using a stamping platform to stamp my image because every once in a while I just don't get a great one. And I'm gonna show you that um, on my stamp that I got, it actually has a cut in it from when it was manufactured. And had I brought it to close to my heart's attention, they would have gladly replaced it. But I just have been making it work and so I've been happy with the way things are and I have not asked them to replace it. So I just have found a workaround for that. But just please note that they have a great return policy if um, you get a stamp that is damaged. Now if it tears, a lot of times they'll ask you to just try and use it the way it is and a lot of times it will work perfectly. So I'm using actually an old close to my heart black ink pad. They do sell them in the new style. But if I have something that works well, I just keep using it. So that's just how I've been. I'm going to bring that down. And yep, my tree is going to go ahead and cover a lot of that pink. So I'll press down. And my good friend Chuck made me this little um, stamping platform buddy that is just a little wood knob with some felt. And that's going to really help to make sure that I have a good impression here. All right, and I'm going to just kind of look at it carefully, and yep, it came out great. So now you can see what I was talking about um, here. Again, if I had called close to my heart, they would have had me just, they would have just sent me a new one. But I was like, no, it works. I have these old Fantastics. I must have had them 13, 14 years. Never really used them, so... I figured that this would be a great way to just kind of cover up that line. And that's just a quick ink. And I used a marker last time, like a, like a journaling marker, but I felt like you could really kind of see the difference. So in this case, so this is a good technique if you ink something and you left off some ink somewhere. All right, so. Great. Well, now we're going to get to the really fun part, and that is creating the reflection. Because right now, yeah, the card looks good, but it's going to look even better. So let me move my things around. And I see that I didn't get a lot of pink on the bottom here, and I do want to have some pink in the reflection. I think I got scared after I had that um, big splotch up there, so I went back in now and I'm just going to add a little pink there. Perfect. All right, so the next step, the important part, is to have some acetate or transparencies 
if you are like me, you've been around in the days when before PowerPoint and all of that, we used to have these acetate slides that we'd have to whip up on a projector and go through it. Well, um, being in the military, I have three boxes of those. So if you're in need of some transparency, drop me a email or message me and I will send some your way. I have plenty of it, but um, you can also buy acetate, which close to my heart does have acetate. We have 12 by 12 sheets, which are good for making shaker cards and things like this. All right, so let's see what happens next. I have a half sheet of transparency and I'm gonna go back and ink up my ink pad. And I am using the straight black. I, a lot of times I like to use our intense black ink um, but I found that that did not give me as great of a result. I needed a really juicy and something that didn't dry up too quickly. And when I tried this before, it dried up on me. So I take the smooth side and I'm going to go ahead and lay it down over the tree that I just inked up. And I'll rub my fingers to go ahead and transfer that ink onto the smooth side of the transparency. Just working my way down making sure I get a nice coverage. It's not gonna be as bold as this, and that's okay because since it's a reflection, we don't even need it to be that solid, right? So it's gonna look really great, I think. All right, I'm gonna try and move quick so this doesn't dry up. I'll lay it here, and then I'm gonna just kind of line up where my trees were. And now I'll go ahead and rub that ink into my card base and I can see as it transfers it the acetate kind of changes color I'm even doing a little bit here on the the border the ground level there all right so this one is a little bit blotchy here on the top but that's okay because I'm probably going to trim this card down to be the same size as this so I have a card base of four and a quarter by five and a half. Then I come in with my black um, la layer and that is four by five and a quarter. And then I go in one more eighth of an inch. So again, I'll leave those measurements below, but you can kind of eyeball it. I'm gonna just lift up and see how great that looks. So again, there's a little bit of a bubble here, but when I trim it, it's gonna look great. If I wasn't 100% happy, I could always ink this back up and just try and add a little bit of ink. I'm gonna see what happens. I had some ink there. So nah, it didn't make much of a difference, but I could definitely come back in and add a little bit more ink. But again, it's the reflection technique. But isn't that pink sky and that light blue sky beautiful? Well, don't forget that this stamp of the month does retire on June 30th, and you can order on my website at chrisfranco.close to my heart. I'd love it if you checked out my blog. It's Stamped Blessings. And I don't know if you know, but every time you order on my website, I pull a mystery hostess winner or two for the month. So you don't need a hostess code, you don't have to remember to click join. Any order that comes in on my website, I automatically enter you for hostess rewards because I love to share all of that with you. Um, oh, before I go, tomorrow's card will be on the, my blog, and this was cased from a close to my heart maker, Chris Lothan, out of Australia, and is just beautiful. And I'm going to tell you more about these dies, but this is also from our stamp of the month using these floral images. So another great reason to pick up this stamp set, not just for the reflection technique. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a great day.